Okay, everyone, welcome um, beautifully on my podcast, Master Your Emotion and Find Your Own Truth and Live With Your Own Truth. So today is the number 47. Like some of you know, I had a long break because I was working on myself. Yes, but I came back and I will be on the... Um, monthly and weekly basis with you so 47 like everyone knows is a i'm really drawn to the angelic number so i would like to give you a tiny description what does it mean about the 47 so definitely you are on the right path and you are how can I say your angel guardian is with you all the time so they are supporting you and they say congratulations keep going but let me just only say number what is number four mean and number seven so number four that's mean is a number like a solid reminder you come over the issue and solution any kind of the trauma any problem and definitely number seven is a number around the intuition and enlightenment but i'm not going to tell you any um, I'm not going to tell you more. I don't know what's going with my camera. She's not picking up my face. Ooh. Okay, let me just only stay still. So other things, you can go and research by your own self, everything. Yes, now I'm just much more visible. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm not going to move myself. I'll be still. I'll be still at the end of this podcast. So welcome warmly. I've got a beautiful, beautiful guest, beautiful soul. I couldn't describe i met that soul when i was um one day no actually one day maybe i was at uh, three days in the buddhist um, monk temple around my place where i'm living at the moment and i fall in love in that meditation anyway so you're going to experience that beautiful energy and you can going to experience because you're going to talk more around the meditation and you're going to talk more around the buddhist philosophy so i would like to introduce that soul welcome warmly to my podcast when is that correct i'm just only pronouncing your name and the name yeah yeah, yeah no beautifully. Problem. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you so much for accepting my invitation. That's mean a lot for me and for my audience. So would you like to introduce yourself by your own words? And uh, maybe a little bit, what is your background? If you feel to be drawn to that. <laughs> sure. Well, um, first of all, I'd just like to introduce myself. Seeing many of you may be um, unknown or first time seeing a Buddhist monk. I'm a Buddhist monk from Thailand, and we are practiced uh, Buddhism, of course. <laughs> and there are three school of Buddhism, and one of the one I, the one I practice is called Theravada Buddhism, which is practiced popular in Thailand, Laos, Myanmar, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, India. And this is the one of the practice that I learning. So if there's questions that Gabriella will asking me in this session, probably going to be in my perspective of Theravada Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Introducing yourself that's beautifully. That's beautifully. We would like to just only ask you some questions around your journey about how did you found yourself in this specific place? How did you become the Buddhist? How did you become the monk? Is that happened because you're born and you've been placed in that place, or that was your own choice and or your own calling from inside? Well, um, first uh, let's go with the background in Buddhism so we can get yes, understand please. because it doesn't yes. have to be forcing or anything in a in the tradition of practice this way. That's first of all, you. the thing about that is. <clears throat> Buddhists um, are not required that one has to be the Buddhist monk. It is by the person, uh, person choice. Okay? okay. And the requirement only simple. You must get permission from your parents and you must be 20 years of age. Oh, okay. Wow. So, therefore, um, the thing is that um, at first, on my uh, journey on this path of uh, uh, spiritual path, I don't really intend to be the Buddhist monk. I just like to live a common way of life just like your guys you know like you guys mm -hmm. when uh after you graduate you start working you earn some money you have a family and so on things like that which is common for everyone you know having a house or maybe a puppies a dogs or maybe cats if you are a cat person that's another thing that i have in my when i was in you know mm -hmm. high school and after i start um go to university this is when it's happened that I'm making myself begin to 
pay more attention to spiritual path. And that is um, uh, when I was about to graduate and I was uh, was working part-time at the time. And after I'm about to graduate, the thing is that I was not fortunate uh, like the people at this time. The thing is when I was graduate, just about two two months before I do the uh, uh, receiving my certificate, Mm. Yeah, you know, at the Yeah, September. September eleven happened. Yes, you can. Uh, I'm not sure if you recall. It's it's a in America. It's a big thing because that at the time the the terrorist attack uh, attack in uh, sept, um, in New York, and mm. the World Trade Building was destroyed. You know, at first I was wake up in the morning and I went to the post office to to drop some of the letters and before I go to uh, the train to get to college. And that is when I heard, oh, it's like a movie, you know, things happen. I yeah. like, hmm, what are they talking about? Until I sit on the train, everything was quiet, everyone was sad. I was like, hmm, what's going on? Until I reached uh, my college. And then, uh, my I, not a college, my bad, it's university. Yes. And what happened is, everyone said, you know, from now on, uh, the university city and everything closed temporarily for five days. Said, Why? Uh-huh. Have you watched the news? no i just got back i just get up from you know come straight here yeah. and then they said oh you know the terrorist attack and and we are living in chicago and this is the, uh, also part of the destination where they are planned to attack next so oh, okay all right and then after i i start doing that going back home everything is just went normally but the thing is it's, i begin to think is this all life we have i have to get up Fear for my life. I have to make money, and after I, I after get out work, finding dinner, go back to bed, get up in the morning, get breakfast, <laughs> go to work. It is all I have. I begin yeah. to think like this. Hmm, there must be some way out. There must be something that be beside. I'm just doing what I'm doing right now, and then you know, uh, that is I begin to kind of like uh maybe I should uh. St- search for something and then one day i um i came across to the temple well in fact because what i live near is uh, near to the temple where i uh, my you know i used to stay with that and so mm-hmm. and that is when i begin to get more spiritual practice and more deeper into um searching and I, and one of the thing is that um they said that by practice of training the mind can free the mind from what is chaining by that and as it is, that is how I begin to, hmm, maybe I should try become a Buddhist monk. And as I begin to pay attention to what it is, has to do, what it has to know, what it has to learn, and I, I begin to adapt. And that's after I graduate, I, you know, two years after I work, I feel like this is it for me, you know, so I begin to become a Buddhist monk. But as it is, honestly speaking, I feel like I should have worked a little bit more because working experience is also be you know helping you get along and know how to live with people because become a buddhist monk you have to understand people that is a part thing i begin i quite an an experience but i'm still learning thank you for asking hopefully it should be enough for your question (laughs) oh that's cool oh well that's more done because the people now knows Uh, it's like the buddhist monk it's not like a I don't know, from the different dimension uh, being or that's come from different planet. That's a human, that's a living form on this planet and experience this life as well. It's like a, yeah, that's that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Wow, you, 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 you mentioned you need to understand the humans. You need to understand the brain. You need to start understand the behavior and that all the cognitive behavior, yeah aspects of yeah human so how did you found yourself during that journey did you have a ca- kind of the moment during become the buddhist monk like a giving no. up or saying no it's not for me maybe i'm going to leave that that I, i'm so curious about it and my audience too well the thing is um after i become a buddhist monk it wasn't easy because um First of all, um, <clears throat> I I lived in United States for quite a long time, so my way of thinking, my way of speaking, my way of doing is quite new, 
because um when I go out in in Thailand, <clears throat> yes, uh, the thing is that I I out in in United United State first, but they just only temporary mm -hmm. because I want to try it out whether I can do it or not. And I tried this for five uh four times, and the fifth time is when I went to Thailand, and what happened was it's quite difficult. Yes, mm. because of the training and the culture. But luckily is that um they are kind enough to, you know, especially the the training team and and the uh, wise about who is also I consider as my um my master. Because uh after I train I finished the training, he know that um if I go straight to work for the temple right away, it will be quite difficult to adjust because Thai society and culture. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not it's not the same because um the thing is uh one thing that they are quite different than um <clears throat> than the Western culture, the way they're thinking is that um seniority. Seniority comes with respect. No matter who you are, if you don't have respect and you don't give yourself respect to the seniority, it will be quite difficult to get along in the community. And that's a part of the thing. So that's why um, as a Western uh, culture is quite different and there's something that need to be uh, adapt and otherwise it will be quite difficult to live with others. And this is the part thing that I I wish that um, if I learn more further, experience further, maybe I can understand how it works because um, it's not easy to adapt. No, definitely. Yeah, I agree with you. It's not easy because I born in Poland. So when I came here to this country a long time ago, I would like to say, I'm going to look into the numbers, but that was a definitely long time ago. Then, yeah, that was a, I had a lot of challenges when, yeah, when the adaptation arrived, exactly. So that was a few things in my life saying, oh my goodness, I need to go, or maybe I need to go back to Poland or maybe oh, that's a lot of things went. Anyway, so I understand that. So, and also especially I can imagine when you go to the Thailand, there's a different oh, culture and different, oh, wow. I've, I've got really respect for you. I was just like, uh, yeah, I'm going bow in front of you because that was like really, really probably challenging time for you. So how did you start the meditation? I mean, let's go talk a little bit more about what is the meditation and what is the meditation for? Because so many of us, we think we meditate, but exactly we don't know how to meditate in other way as well. Mm, to start with, um, um, just want to rephrase your question you want to know how i start to learn meditation right yes you can yeah or, and also you can can you explain a little bit what what is the meditation for my audience oh. because maybe they've got a different perspective different point of view that's yeah. that's yeah. that's um okay that's that's possible um the thing is um if i start this uh, maybe it could be better if i show you with the presentation would that be all right oh yes please do that oh wow that's amazing fantastic Okay, um, well, first of all, before we get to that part, allow me to uh, explain to you how I get to learn about meditation. At first, I myself don't really, I would say, not really like to meditate much because, of, you know, I'm still young and I was at the time. And I feel that um, I like to do things more than just sit still and do nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so it's kind of like you like to do more activity. And the thing is that um when I was in a volunteer I was when I was a volunteer at the temple, and you know I like to do all the volunteer service, helping people and helping out the community and the temple, and that it is, but it is not enough because of the thing is, the community, bring people in to meditate, but if you just do the volunteer work and you don't meditate with others, how you're gonna get along with them? So whenever there is a meditation, I usually sneak out. But sometimes mm -hmm. I have to sit still. But the thing is, when I sit still, it just sit. You know, I don't. I don't know how to meditate. I just only know to close my eyes and imagine uh, an object to help me focus and recite the mantra. I said, "Yeah, I can do that." But then I was like, "What for?" I close my eyes and just sit. Sometimes I fall asleep. Sometimes I have wandering thought. Oh, and that is all I always experienced when I was a volunteer. Mm -hmm. the, and then after I found that mm, I like to be the Buddhist monk, but I forgot one thing. The Buddhist monk duty is to practice meditation. 
<laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so you've been doing that stuff, but okay, forgot the practice. So when I become a Buddhist monk, I have to practice meditation and just do the same thing. I just close my eye, visualize an object, and then recite mantra. Sometimes wandering thoughts, sometimes far asleep, and just not progressing. <laughs> it's just like you're just sitting still, and kind of like you're sitting waiting for for yourself or forcing yourself to sleep. Have you ever done that? Oh, okay. <laughs> It's like that. And so until uh, about seven years, when I was a Buddhist monk, on my seven years, that is beginning to change. Because um, I found that my friend, every morning they would go to meditate from 9 and to, uh, no, and from 8.30 and to 11. Oh. Uh, actually, between 8.30 to 10.30, my bad. I, I forgot about the time. But that was like long time ago, you know. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, <clears throat> I was like, hmm, then I have nothing else to do anyway. Why, you know, it's a duty of the monk too. I should neglect like this. So I just go with my friend later and just do this alone. I keep doing that. I have to meditate from there every every day, you know, at least one hour from that time. I begin to uh, uh, kind of like catching on a little bit with I'm not just sitting for closing my eye and wasting my time like this. There must be something. So when I begin to, you know, just sit still like that until, you know, when you are sitting still long enough and you, you do that every day, you don't have anything to think about. It's kind of like begin blank. So when mm -hmm. you close your eyes, just feel like mm, this, this, this point where I just close my eye, I feel comfortable. I'll just stay here. I don't have to do anything for these two hours, you know, just do this. And it's just getting better, better until I found inner peace. When I reached that state, I asked my friend, who is uh, a better experience than me, I said, I, I experienced this, is it correct? And he said, well, yeah. Did you do that for a long time? Oh, oh wow. Well, I have wasted my seven years of that. <laughs> oh, Going wow. in the wrong way. So that's, that's I begin to practice more and more. The catch on that is, you have to be patient and, you know, thoughts come, that is common. But the thing is how you observe your thought. If you react to it, it will never end. But if you submit by let it be and let it end, you don't have to let it continue. You have a chance. Mm. So just have to be patient. All right. And so speaking of the meditation, one thing that I need to be clarified a little bit because of the term meditation in the Westerner and the Easterner is quite different. I would say totally different. Mm. In the East, in the Westerner meditation, if you look on a Google, uh, you search for a, a translation of meditation, it means something like this, contemplations by your own thought or using your mind to think about your thought, you know. Yeah. But in med but meditation in the Easterner, it means it's derived from the term samadhi, and, and also another term is bhavana. Bhavana, mm -hmm. they, they, they don't use the term meditation, but since they, this term, uh, what we are practicing, it doesn't have in the Western way. So they use it as, dubbing it as meditation, but in the West, but in where I'm from, it came from two words, samadhi and bhavana. These two are the practice of mental cultivation. That's what the term they use. All right, training the mind, and by to be more direct, uh, samadhi is what commonly used for the meditation, and samadhi is mean focusing the mind at one single point. Mm. Okay, and the following here, what I practice in my temple, we focusing our mind inside our body, and how to meditate. Well, since you asking, well. Let me giving you some of the presentation to give you a general idea how oh, we yeah. practice and what meditation is like. Give me just one moment to pull this up, all right? Okay, beautifully. Thank you.
I'm just going to switch my screen just a little bit. Okay. Okay. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> we, we can see you. You are here, but yeah. Oh, yes, it's something, yes. We've got. You see the presentation that I use for teaching uh, for the meditation, mm. all right? And just giving you introduction. And first of all, practicing of meditation all right, just give you a few moments. All right. The foundation of the meditation that we practice are required to have in every meditation are these two, relaxation and mindfulness. Like I mentioned earlier, meditation is the practice of maintaining, maintaining the mind at one single point. And once you're focusing at that point, you must maintain the balance between these two, the relaxation and mindfulness. What is the difference between just only mindfulness without relaxation? The thing is kind of like when you are forcing yourself to do something that you don't like, kind of like, um, I would say, driving a car. I was in this example, just forget about the term you don't like. It's something that you have to do, you know. So when yeah. you drive a car, usually when you drive, sometime when you are not, uh, when you are driving, you have to say, Pay your attention in front of your car, right? You see the view on the side of the road, but you don't really focus on it because you have to look at the front. Otherwise, that could cause an accident. Mm -hmm. But when you do this for a long, long time, you need to take a break. You know, sometimes you have to go to the toilet. Sometimes you have to sleep because when you drive for a long, long journey, you know, it's fatigue and tired. That's true. Yes. And because of mindfulness only, no relaxation. You said, well, when you drive a car, you can listen to the music. Yeah, but eventually you have to stop at some point. But imagine this. Let's just say you read your novel that you like. In my case, I like Harry Potter. That's, my, that's how I get my English. <laughs> oh, did you learn from the Harry Potter book? Yes. Oh, I used wow. to I used to bought all of them, but when I order in, I don't know where I put it anymore. It's gone. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, the thing for the thing was that my point is, when you read a book that you like, you forget about the time. Sometimes you don't even sleep. I remember when that book come out uh, when I was still college in college, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I finished I finished them uh, in five days. I. Yeah, uh, usually, okay. you know, it could be faster, but I have to, I have school. So I read like this morning on the train. It usually took me an hour to get to my university. Morning, I read that part. Evening, I read another part. And then when I get back, I feel like, hmm, forget about the, the book. I just read Harry Potter. Hmm. From that evening until like almost 1 or 2 a.m., go back, go, and then I went to bed, come back again, go, go to university and read the book. I do that continuously for five days and I forgot about the time, you know. <laughs> but I remember every single part of the detail and I, I, I connect the story quite well. I remember the character name, even though there are so many. Can you imagine that? Why? Because mindfulness and relaxation go together. Meditation are like that. If you meditate, but you have only mindfulness, it will be just like you're driving a car without relaxation. And in the end, eventually you have to stop. And worse is you don't even start or go that far because the thought could be disturbing you before you continue. That's the thing. All right. So the key to that is maintain the mindfulness in the balance. If M is more than R in this equation that you see on the diagram, you feel like when it's going to be over, you want to open your eyes. And in the end, it's no more meditation. But if you have too much relaxation, you could fall asleep just like I did in the past or the thought just take over your time of meditation. 
just go with the thought and eventually it's not meditation because you know not your mind is not focusing at one point that you want it to eventually mm-hmm. it's just wasting the time and so by that well all you have to do is maintain the balance all right and as it is let me just skip this part real quick because um, our time is quite limited the master my teacher said that no matter the method we use to meditate Whichever way we practice, the principle is mindfulness and relaxation must go together. And that is how you practice meditation. And when you find your focusing point at that, you have to adjust your body and mind if you're losing the balance. That's mm-hmm. all it is. All right. So by that, whenever you meditate, keep checking how is your attention. Is it just right? If it's not too tight, it's not too loose, you feel content to be like this, there you go. Maintain that contentment continuously continuously on and on. So the moment when you close your eyes to start your meditation, you feel good, you like it. That's it. Maintain that feeling. You don't yeah. have to force yourself. So you, when you enjoy it, kind of like when you enjoy to do something, nobody forced you, nobody rushed you. That's the feeling. If you get it, you will always progress in meditation and in order to help you focus further sometime when you are feeling content but sometime you may have something distracting you like for example you could be thinking of your friends or your work or your school or where depend on where you are if you're thinking like that that's mean your mind is losing focus it's been wandering outside your body now so visualization, visualization is another technique is one of the techniques we use in our temple to help focusing our mind by simply visualize simple objects like the sun, a full moon, a star, mm-hmm. or the crystal ball. The reason is that it's round, easy to visualize, bright and clear, easy to remember. Visualize them inside your body. And that's it. That's all you do. And visualize them. The best place is around your abdomen, which is considered as the most balancing point. Or you can choose at any point where you prefer. For me, I start at my between my four, my my eyes. Mm-hmm. You, I feel better. It usually comes to the balancing point to my abdomen right away. If you can do that better, either way is fine. This is how you should start with. All right. However, if this is all well, another technique that help in case if you have thoughts, we use the mantra to help us kind of like we should uh calm our mind and focusing because sometimes we have thought like mm, I'm thirsty, I want some water wait, it's almost dinner I like to have some hamburger for my dinner there you go, and you thought like that on and on, you use yeah. this mantra decide it's in your mind or you can use your own mantra my temple used this word Sama Arahang, or loosely translate as absolute purity or absolute truth depending on how you want to use it but it's just only translation but either way, you can use something like peace in, peace out. Either mm-hmm. way is fine. All you have to do is recite them in your mind whenever there is thought arise in your meditation. Mm-hmm. All right. And last but not least, after you practice this, how do you check whether you are do it correctly? Because if you want to progress, you have to do it correctly and consistently. Otherwise, it's just going to be like me wasting seven years. Mm-hmm. Do it wrong and do it consistently wrong. Just on the way, it's gonna be wrong, you know. So my master taught this that receiving happiness every time we meditate, even just for a moment, this is confirmation that we are practicing correctly. And so that is how we practice meditation. In case if you are feeling wow, it's interesting, you can always find out. Come to my temple here. What it look like? You can see behind my screen. That is my temple. What does it look like? We have meditation every Tuesday night and Thursday night between 7 to 8, 30 p.m. every week. And let's notice. Or check out our website, Patpatamakaya London. Or you can meditate with me every night, uh, every Monday, Wednesday, or Sunday. Between this time, look at the screen. All right. Anyway, hopefully this is enough. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I would like to ask you one more question around because... Uh, that was something around the happiness. I don't know what's wrong with my camera today. It's not picking up my 
Yeah. Maybe five, it's five because of it's, it's auto focused. If you keep moving, it's just gonna keep adjusting. <laughs> yeah, I, I try not to move too. myself, but yeah. <laughs> okay, it is what okay. it is. Okay, everyone can right. hear my voice. <laughs> By no my quote, oh, this is right. Just See? <laughs> uh, I would like to ask you about the question about the happiness because that's really that's really for for myself. I was meditating mm -hmm. yesterday and and today as well. But yesterday I didn't focus too much. I just only sat down. I was relaxed and I was like adjust my body and everything. And then I put the beautiful music and everything was now nice. that was a great, that was a fantastic. Suddenly I just only found myself like oh my cats or maybe they're going to leave the house because I left the window <laughs> open and I said okay it's okay don't worry they're not going to leave. But then I just only decided to myself no. I put it out that phone and I put it that music. I said, let me close that door. Let me close that window. But so that was the distraction. That was a lot of distraction. I had a beautiful meditation. But for the people, they didn't know if that they're doing correct because you said the happiness. So that happiness is that the feeling coming from the meditation or right. at the end, or is that happiness like they can see some kind of the pictures or I don't know that. Would you like to tell a little bit more then? All right. From my understanding and what I experienced, okay, let's take a look at the term happiness first. Happiness in what you mean could be something like getting what you want, satisfy what you want. Mm. Uh, what you desire, you get it what you like. And you get something that you are enjoying about that. But happiness in Buddhism is uh, quite different from, from what you are uh, experiencing happiness in uh, in Buddhism is mean being content mm -hmm. because it's kind of like uh, when you are having what you have you don't need anything further kind of like you may have your own church your own shirt that you're wearing okay mm -hmm. it's quite common. but when you see many friends have a new shirt showing it off but you don't really disturb by that showing off because you like what you have. That's the contentment. Okay. And this is the happiness that Buddhism is meant by that. When you're practicing meditation, okay, when you stop your thought, when you feel relaxed, when you feel joy of what you are doing, that's a feeling, I would say, just only 0 0.1 or less than that of contentment one would gain. The more you still yourself, the contentment feeling will be immense increasing. Mm -hmm. And some even feel that this is even more uh it's something some said some even say that um there is something they never experienced before and they like it so much. Why? Because this is the food for the mind. The mind mm -hmm. like the feeling of contentment, being peace, being still. Kind of like when you are eating something that you like, you just want more and more. It's like that. Okay. But the thing is, we never we never experience or train our mind to experience something like that before. So sometime before you get to that part, it's just going to be quite different first. But if you continue practice more often, even just for relaxation, do you like it? It will give you a kick good start already. Oh, but yeah. More and more. I would say yeah. one only can be experienced by their own. And I cannot help you on that. I can only guide you and meditate with you most. That's all I can. But it's the person who do it is you yourself. Similarly, if you are hungry, you have to eat it yourself. I cannot eat for you. Wow, if I beautiful. eat for you, I get better food. I get more. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's beautifully said. Yeah. So that's, yeah, we need to, yeah, we've got our own power inside us, ourselves, and we need to do the work. Yeah, that's true. And somebody can only give us the guidance and yeah wow that's amazing and the last the last maybe question if you would like to answer this question so what kind of the benefits we can get from the meditation oh well speaking of the benefit <laughs> of practicing meditation i would say there are plenty one could say uh it's take a long time to answer on that part but uh, you can find a lot of information like that on Google. There are plenty of research and think about meditation, it, how, how it can help the mind. But one thing why meditation is important, let me first telling you now that from my experience, when I yes. practice meditation, 
what would keep one to continue practicing? Only two things from my wisdom, uh, from my experience. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Number one is that you experience inner peace or firing contentment if you find that for just one moment you want it more. This no one need to tell you. You are willing to meditate by yourself. Okay. Yeah. Number two is you understand the importance of meditation, why it's so important. In Buddhism, practice of meditation is part of way of life. It allows one to gain wisdom, wisdom about positivity in, their, in one's conscience, in one's mind. So when one wants to do something, if it's feel, making them feeling positive about it, and if it makes them happy, why the other also happy? This is a wisdom that they find that they want to continue doing that. But if it makes one ha happy, but causing others to suffer, their conscience will stop them. No, one should not do. Kind of like if you are bullying someone, you're having fun, but the person who get bullied, they are not happy. That's the conscience will tell you. And this kind of pure conscience of joy and happiness, it will be in one's mind when one meditate. And that is how one gain wisdom through the meditation. That is how one, uh, that's how the Buddhists are uh, uh, encouraged to practice meditation in their daily life. Let me telling you this now that I said I use the term encourage, not require. Mm, that means okay. Buddhist is not forcing anyone to do things that they encourage people to do, because how one gonna be happy? It has to be to be in one's own choice not by someone forcing or ordering you to do, all right? Yeah. So when practicing meditation is important to our life, is it will help us kind of like when you take a shower every day, right? You feel clean, you feel comfortable, sleep, and then get up ready, take shower again to start your new day. Our mind is like that too, when you are cleaning it through practice of meditation. When the mind becomes still, it cleaning itself. Imagine when you hold a glass of water, when you put uh, dust and sediment inside the water. If you're stirring them, you cannot because it's become cloud, cannot see the bottom. Mm -hmm. But when you let it on the table without touching it for a while, all the sediment and dust begin to sinking down to the bottom, making you see the clear the clear the bot see the bottom easier. Meditation is like that. What's in your mind when you are not still? It just become clouded, making you unable to see what, uh, feel or experience as it should be. Similarly to when you put on the sunglasses, you see everything dark. That's because you cannot. It's maybe protecting your eyes, but that my point is that it make you see everything dark, rather than what you should be seeing. Everything clear. So when you are Practice meditation is allow your mind to become clear and feel and see and experience as it should be. And that is how it's so important in one's life. One should meditate. Speaking, it could be say, easier said than done, but you should start consistently. Five to 10 minutes is a good start. Okay. You want to experience more? 15 more minutes. It's also help. Well, oh, hopefully yeah. That's so amazing because yeah, what you've been talking about just that, that to my mind came that's a clarity so that that's like it's a like you said a showering, and cleaning your body, but you need to clean your mind as well. Yeah, that's clearing. That's amazing. So we need to shower in and out ourselves. So then our life will be looks much better because that will be have a clear vision for us for ourselves. That's amazing. Let me just only check. Do I have more questions? No, I don't have any more questions. Would you like to say something to my audience? Any uplifting words, any encouraged words for them? Okay. Well, when you're practicing or if you are begin to medit in, to be interested in meditation, <clears throat> please take a note in here that your sitting position is matter. Sit, not lie down. Okay. Okay. Sit comfortably it could be on a couch on a sofa or on a bed but remember if you are not used to sit on the floor sit on a chair 
make sure you are relaxed and start with that. All right. If you're forcing yourself, I meet a lot of people who are doing this. Oh, meditation is Asian way of practice. To experience that, you have to sit on the floor. It looks very cool. All right, no problem. But you're not going to get anything because when you close your eye, nobody looking at you at all. Yeah. But yourself, it's going to be trouble because when you are forcing yourself to sit cross-legged, I'll give you five minutes. You want to feel like you want to move and you want to quit meditation. And so if you want to start, please take a note. Start with a chair or your sitting position that you are comfortable first. When you begin to experience and you want to look cool to inside, when people see you, adjust that later. Okay? This is the, uh, I will call this is the myth of meditation that people thought that you have to sit on the floor. Another myth of meditation that I like to emphasize is please take a note in here that meditation is not required that one has to be Buddhist. Okay? It is universal. Anyone can practice. According to the history, it's even long exist before Buddhism. So mm -hmm. it, you don't have to be Buddhist to practice meditation. All right. I hope this could be give you a right start, whether you should or not, because it's not about religion. It's about your mind. You want to be happy. That's it. If you don't want it to, you can just skip meditation. <laughs> this could be part of it too, to make it part of your life. Another way, you could, you could think of it as an extra. Okay. Beautifully said. Yeah, thank you so much. But also I would like to add something like a different form of the meditation for me is as well when I'm painting or when I'm writing or even when I'm doing the dishwashing. It's like I'm just only completely disconnected from this world and I'm just only drifting somewhere. I don't know. Sometimes I'm forgetting about myself. I would like to give the audience uh, the, some experience when I was, I couldn't remember, maybe five years ago when I was start painting. And that came spontaneously. And I was painting, 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 painting. And I was at 3.15. When I was supposed to go to the school, I collect my children. I forgot. I <laughs> lose my time. And then suddenly 4 p.m., the call called me. And then, are you collecting your children or not? I said, oh. And that was like a, yeah. So that's kind of the meditation for me that was. Like it's staying and painting. I lose my time. I lose everything. I just only was thrown into the picture. <laughs> so that's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yes. There are many kind of meditation. Go is also one of it. As you can see, you're focusing yourself and you forgot about the time. You have mindfulness yeah. and relaxation. Oh, the only difference is where you focus. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that's true. Thank you so much. Where do people can find you and if they would like to? I know you have got some information oh. over here but they can go on your website or they can go and yeah. find. You can also searching us um, on our website. It's called um, Wat Pradamakaya London. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or you can search for me on my Facebook here. at it's, The name is Great Teaching Monk. You can reach me there and send a message over there as well. Okay. Also, if you are live nearby, you can search my on our postcode G1 uh, G, uh, G, U, G, U, two. Oh, well, just don't, I forgot. Don't worry, don't worry. If you've got that information, you can give me, and I'm going to leave this everything below this video. So, oh, okay. so everyone would be having the okay. great and quick access. So that would be a great, okay. yeah. So that's kind of the things. So yeah, definitely, no I'm doing like that. Yes, don't oh, yeah. worry about. I, I, it's, it's come back now. G, U, two, one, two, T, G. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. That's good. Yeah, I was like, yeah, somewhere, somewhere. Yes, yeah, that's happened for us so many times. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. That was so profoundly good. And that was lots of knowledge and information for the people who would like to start and would like to learn how to meditate and bring their life onto a much better level and a higher level. Thank you so much for accepting. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. Hope to see you at the temple sometime soon. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Definitely. Thank you.